Like I said, if his line holds up and is healthy, uh, Aaron Murray can do great things on the offensive side of the ball at Georgia. All right, so moving on, we got number four, the one and only Denard Robinson quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines. So basically, all I'm sure all of our fan base on Spreaker knows who we're talking about. Denard Robinson, one of the most decorated quarterbacks in college football right now. He can run, he can pass, he can do basically anything. And he's basically been a Heisman hopeful now for about, this is going to be his third year as um, a Heisman hopeful. He's He hasn't really, he, he's had great statistics, but he hasn't really lived up to the Heisman trophy expectations. That exactly. he. But he does everything for the Michigan offense. And without that, without him and that offense, it would not function whatsoever. So basically, he just needs to take his team to the promised land. He needs to get his team in a BCS game. He needs to do what he needs to do, and then we'll consider him more for the Heisman Trophy. And don't overlook the fact last year that he won the game for them in uh, the Sugar Bowl over Virginia Tech exactly. at the really at the last second, had a huge drive. I think they ended up kicking a game-winning field goal or they blocked a field goal that would have been a game-winner for yeah, Virginia Michigan Tech. Michigan had a lot of good games last year. And like I said, you got to give a lot of credit to the head coach, Brady Hoke. Coming in there in his first year, a lot of people didn't expect to do what he did. They won ten game, nine or ten games. Can't really think of the number off the top of my head. But great season. Denard Robinson, hands down the best quarterback in the Big Ten and exactly yeah when you throw for 5000 yards and you rush for 3000 it's uh, and you throw and you score 75 touchdowns it's amazing work in 2 years but he needs to throw less interceptions he needs to become uh, he yeah. ne he needs to he needs to cut out the mistakes and become the quarterback that we know he can be so we can consider him to be the Heisman trophy guy that we know we want him to be you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see how he matures and is able to read defense and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. All right, so moving on, we got number three. Nick could probably tell you a little bit about this guy, Tyron Matthew, defensive back for LSU. Hands down the top defensive player in the whole entire country. I mean, just looking at his stats, I mean, this dude is just a ball hawk. Interceptions, forcing fumbles, punt returns, kickoff returns, you name it, he's there. He was there in New York last year. Robert Griffin wins over Andrew Luck. Kind of, a, he had a bit of a scandal himself, him and Spencer Ware with the synthetic marijuana uh, testing positive for that, which... If you if you read up on it, the only reason they failed that is because they tested for a certain chemical in the uh, in the fake weed that showed up on a drug test. They were out for a week. They were actually out for the Auburn game. They came back, won against Alabama, uh, but hands down best defensive player in the country as far as a Heisman. It's, really hard. it's very rare for a defensive guy to but win he the was, Heisman. He was in the he mix, was, he was he was in the mix, mix last year. year. I mean, he is an electrifying player, but... Every time he touches the ball, you're afraid that he's going to do something amazing with that ball. Definitely a candidate for Defensive Player of the Year in the Thorpe Award, but Always. Heisman, I don't really see it. He's number three on the list. But, but, I mean, he has a chance. Anytime we talk about Tyron Matthew, he has a chance. He has, he has the best chance of any defensive player getting that Heisman Trophy. I'm just interested to see how many fumbles he's going to force this season. Because <laughs> exactly. it seems like every single game he, he does, was forcing a fumble. Exactly. Every time he every time he does something, he, he does it for a reason. He never has a play where he's not productive in the play. So, we're going to move on. Number two, Monty Ball running back from Wisconsin. So, of course, this... Uh, this running back is one of the best running backs in the country. He's been on the he's been on our he's been on our radar for um quite for, some time. Exactly. We know we know we know about Monty Ball. We know he's a good running back. I think part of it has to do that he's running from Wisconsin. Right. And Wisconsin Get, 
doesn't throw the ball much. Exactly. I mean, Wisconsin, I mean, they're a good team, don't get me wrong, but it's not, the Wisconsin's no Alabama, it's no LSU. They, they don't get the national spotlight exactly. that everybody does. And, um, they're not in the they're, it's not like they're playing for the I mean they're game. relevant. They played in the Rose Bowl last year against Oregon, but Exactly. But no one's really like, "Oh my god." Yeah, nobody's no one's, hyped up exactly. on Wisconsin. Exactly. No one's high on Wisconsin. And, and, and it's going to be interesting to see uh Monty Ball a victim of assault last week. So it's going to be interesting to see how he responds with uh, the injuries that he sustained uh in the attack, but once football season gets rolling, you're not going to be able to stop this guy. He had over 30 touchdowns last year on the ground. That's And do you think losing his quarterback will Oh, Russell Wilson? That'll definitely. It's going to it's going to be How do you, how do you think that's going to affect the their I mean, a quarterback and a running back, they have a bond. And they, they once once country, you break yeah. that bond, it's it's kind of it's not irreplaceable cuz I mean, you have to get used to it at some point right. unless you come in the same year that that uh, the quarterback comes in and you play with them for four years, then you're not going to have to deal with any type of transition. Right. But as far as the new quarterback for Wisconsin, getting his feet wet in the offense, they run a lot out of the eye. So, as but as, I mean, really the only thing he would have to get adjusted to is the way that he, he exchanges yeah, the ball exactly. to Monty Ball. So. Exactly. So, uh Last year, he ran for uh, 1,900 yards, broke uh, Barry Sanders' single-season touchdown record with 39. He is a great running back. We hope to see him do well this season, and we hope to see him be one of the he one of the top Heisman candidates for this year. So, now we're going to go to the number one Heisman hopeful for this year. I personally think he has the Heisman wrapped up if he has anything to what he had last year. Of course, I'm talking about Mac Barkley, QB out of USC, the University of Southern California. He had a press conference last year to tell everybody that he was coming back to school. He was staying in school, and he's going to lead his team to the promised land. I can feel it. What do you I think? mean, USC coming off their recent bowl ban. Yeah. It's it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's I mean, I know I keep saying that, but it is. We that's all you can say until you actually see it happen. It's right. gonna be interesting. Everything to is see interesting how to... USC responds. I mean Right. Because and... if you're not going to the postseason, you really don't have much to play for. I mean, yeah, winning's good, but it doesn't really earn you anything in the long run. Right. Uh, Lane Kiffin, a really good coach. A lot of people in Tennessee, I'm sure, hate his guts Oakland. because he was over <laughs> – or no, Tennessee. Yeah, he, people in yeah. Tennessee and Oakland, uh, wait, in Oakland, they hate him. In Tennessee, they hate him. He, has, he hasn't been a good coach until he got to USC. <laughs> and now that – now that he's there, Matt Barkley's running the offense, one of the top players in the country. He on should the be the number one the pick ball. next year for in the NFL. When you throw for three uh, for thirty five hundred yards and you have thirty nine passing touchdowns, you should be a number one pick, and he probably will be. He is one of the best quarterbacks in college football, and we just think I think that he's gonna take it home and win the Heisman this year. It I mean, time will tell when all these Heisman players or all these Heisman hopefuls start playing. But exactly, we're gonna go to a break. More football coming up on the next segment of we'll Fourth and Right. Back. Stay tuned. Oh. You're listening to Fourth and Inches on Spreaker Web Radio, presented by Bayou State Pawn and Jewelry, RDM Audio, and Bayou Bark. Now, here are the hosts, Nick Lott and Armando Ramirez. We are back, Fourth and Inches. It's a party on a Wednesday, Fourth and, fourth and Inches style. Coming back with y'all. Uh, we're going to get into 
a little bit more football this segment. Uh, we're going to take a break. Then I'm going to break down the PGA Championship, what I think will happen this week at Kiowa Island. Pete Dye's Ocean Course. So if you're a golf fan, stay tuned for the next segment. But right now, uh, we got a bunch of power rankings to get to, breaking down the teams from 25 all the way down to 11. So without further ado, we're going to start at Notre Dame at 25. Last summer, the Fighting Irish were riding the momentum of a four-game winning streak into the relatively fa favorable schedule, taking, talking the, or taking the BCS expectations along the way. But the 2011 campaign was sandwiched by a pair of two-game losing streaks, which quarterback controversies and turnover issues popping up across the season. Arguably the toughest schedule in the nation awaits the Irish in 2012, and the QB Derby remains clouded. Can Notre Dame thrive under the radar this season? Can Notre Dame ever be considered under the radar? Facing six teams uh, in the top 25 this year, it's going to be interesting to see what Notre Dame does. Yeah, um, I think last year... Uh... They had a they had a quarterback controversy and they had um they had some problems last year but I think they're gonna be fine I think uh, Dane Chris leaving to Kansas um, now it should be Tommy Reese's job they have a couple of tough games they have one against Oklahoma we'll see how they do this year uh, Boise State talked a little bit about them earlier Kellen Moore not Kellen going Moore to be leave. yeah Kellen Moore is leaving uh, there are no answers yet about who will replace him. Uh, the wrecking, the record-setting quarterback who was the heart of his team for so many years. The last time Boise State lost its starting quarterback and had so few starters returning was in 2004. Yeah, and uh, Boise State, we talked about them. We, they had the opening game against Michigan State. They have a tougher schedule this year than in the Big East. We'll see how they actually perform, and we'll see how they do in the new Big East. And at 23, we have Florida. Will Muschamp's first season in Gainesville did not go well. Florida went winless in October, and it took a bowl game victory over Ohio State for the Gators to avoid their first losing season since 1979. Exactly. And they have uh, the Week 2. They have a big Week 2 challenge against the Texas A&M Aggies at Kyle Field in College Station, and Texas. And that is going to be a tough ticket to get. Exactly. That's going to be a tough game. They're going to have a tough schedule in the SEC. So, Florida, I'm not too high on them. Will Muschamp, let's see how he does. They have a crazy hard schedule exactly. this year. Exactly. So everybody in the SEC does. Number 22, Oklahoma State. Uh, no Justin Blackman, no Brandon Whedon anymore. But they do have a system in place under Mike Gundy that has produced equal or greater wins in every season hey mike gundy's a man and he's 40 well he's probably like 42 now but whatever um i think uh yeah losing justin blackman losing losing brenda whedon to the browns it's going to be tough and it's going to uh it's going to be tough for them to be a great team but i think with uh mike gundy he is a great coach he can do he is a man and he, I can't, I can't stop, I can't stop, uh, I can't stop making the little reference. I can't stop making the reference, but, he, yeah, so, anyways, Oklahoma State should have a pretty good season, even though they're not going to uh, have Brandon Whedon or Justin Blackman getting DUIs. 21, Nebraska. <laughs> Taylor Martinez, finally 100% healthy, and after an offseason spent on footwork and passing mechanics, the junior quarterback expects much better results in 2012. Yeah, I think uh, Nebraska should have a pretty good shot of having a good, uh, what am I saying, a good, uh, a good season, and a, 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 um, they should be a winning team, and they should be uh, in the mix. Relevant again. What? They should be relevant again. Yeah, they should be relevant, just like a lot of teams are this year. And I don't really agree with this next team, uh, Kansas State. I mean, Colin Klein is a good quarterback, but as far as like where they are ranked in the preseason polls and how Colin Klein is considered like, one of the top ten Heisman finalists, I mean, it just I don't really see it happening. I mean, I think a lot of people are high on Colin Klein. I mean, they did have a 10-win season last year, uh, losing to Arkansas in the Cotton Bowl. But I 
don't think that much success will come this season for the Wildcats. Yeah, Kansas State being in the Big 12, they might be a, a little bit of a favorite, but I, they have a tough schedule. They still have to play Oklahoma, and they still have to play a lot of tough teams. So um, let's just let's not get on the bandwagon Kansas State yet. Uh, coming in at 19, Virginia Tech.